Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Gaysford and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to connect to your Home Assistant over SSH. Now if you watched my previous video about installing add-ons for our Home Assistant, you will go ahead and see that we installed the terminal and SSH add-on already. Um, but I gave some bad advice in that video so I just wanted to go ahead and clear things up. Um, it's different than when I set it up in the past and I've come to realize that and I wanted to go ahead and set the record straight so that way you guys have all the correct information to actually set it up by yourselves going forward. All right, so just a quick recap. Um, to go ahead and install the terminal and SSH add-on, um, you'll go over to your supervisor and you'll go over to your add-on store. Um, and by default, you're not gonna have access to this terminal and SSH option right here. All right, so it's not actually showing us the option we had last time to go ahead and enable advanced features here um, because we've already enabled it. So if you don't have advanced features already turned on, you can go ahead and do so under your profile. Um, and if you just scroll down here, there's this advanced mode here. You'll just have to make sure that is turned on and you'll be able to continue with this. You know, just go to supervisor, um, the add-in store, and then you'll install this terminal and SSH plugin here. I've already did that and you can see that in the last video, but I mentioned that after trying to connect to our SSH that it wasn't working and I said it probably just needed to restart the home assistant um, before it started working, which I believe was good advice if you're on an older version of home assistant, but nowadays there is a little bit more configuration that does need to take place in order for you to connect over SSH. So to go ahead and do that, um, we'll actually just hop over to the configuration tab up here. Um, and this is new for me, so I apologize for not pointing it out in the last video, but um, this is actually where you're gonna actually put some configuration to get your terminal and SSH actually configured and running. Um, by default, you can actually see under network that it's disabled. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna enable that so we can actually start using it. Um, to do that, we just type in 22 for the port that we wanna connect over 22 is the default one, but you could connect over whatever port you would like to use for Home Assistant. We'll go ahead and hit save there. Um, it's gonna ask us to go ahead and restart the add-on, um, but we're not gonna just stop right there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do some configuration up here. Um, normally, I wouldn't recommend just using password authentication. Um, I would recommend using a authentication key over SSH um, just by going to your terminal um, and just typing in, in like SSH key gen. Hitting enter, it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. As you can see here, I'm logged in as the root user. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just save it in the default location. And it's gonna ask me for a passphrase. Um, Typically, I wouldn't recommend using a passphraseless key for SSH connections, but for this is this is just an example. I'm not actually going to keep this key when I'm actually using Home Assistant going forward. So I'm just going to go ahead and just leave it blank. It's going to generate that key there, and if I actually hop over or hop into that, gotta think about it. That SSH folder for root and just do an ls i do have a few ssh keys now and the one i'm interested in is this public key so you always keep the private key to yourself you always put the public key on the server you're going to try to connect you shouldn't ever put your private key or the one that doesn't have the extension on it you should never put that anywhere besides somewhere where you can completely control it so you don't want to be sharing that if anybody asks you to give them give you so basically if anybody asks for your private key tell them to back off uh, but we're, we're interested in this id underscore rsa.pub and i'm just going to go ahead and cat that out and you see all this hash here this is the public key that i'm interested in so i'm just going to select that we're going to copy it and then we're going to go ahead and give it to this authorized keys parameter. So what we're going to go ahead and do um, is we're just going to put some quotes in here. But we only have the one for right now. So just inside there, we're just going to go ahead and paste our key. Um, it's long and jarbled and whatever, but that's fine. And then 
And then now that we have that key there, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. And it's gonna ask us to go ahead and restart it again. You can see that it auto did auto fix some configuration for us. It took it out of the array and turned it into, it looks like a list, um, but that should be fine. So, um, oh, does not look like it is running. Let's go ahead and start that up again. Take a look at the log here. It is listening on port 22 now. So if we go back to our terminal here, and SSH root. And again, mine is running on 10, 10, 1, 46. It's probably gonna be different on your network. And yep, I was able to connect using that key that we generated and passed into the configuration here. Um, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and change this after this video, but I wanted to go ahead and set the record straight that uh, I'm gonna give you guys some bad information in the last video. Um, so just a quick recap, make sure you have advanced home mode on, or advanced mode on in your profile. From inside there, you're gonna install the terminal and SSH plugin. You need to go over to your configuration and set it to whatever port you want. The default port is 22. Um, and then you have to go ahead and configure it again, using the authorized key is going to be the preferred method, especially if you have a password on that. It's just going to make it a little bit more secure. Um, but that's about it. Now, you, as you can see, using a normal terminal window, we're able to connect over SSH. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I know it was a pretty quick video. Um, I just wanted to quickly get this out there and correct what I said in my last video. So hopefully you guys understand and hopefully this did set you up in the right course for getting SSH enabled on your home assistant. Um, if you do have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave a comment down below. I would appreciate it and I try, I try to get to all the comments that I receive. So um, I, I'll definitely try to help you if you leave a comment down below. Um, if you liked the video, definitely hit that like button. Um, if you're interested in home automation stuff, hit subscribe. I'm definitely going to be releasing a lot more. I'm currently setting up my smart home. My next video will be setting up Z-Wave devices. Um, so definitely stick around for that. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys giving me your time and watching the video. Um, and I'll see you guys real soon. Alright guys, I just finished editing up this video and before I leave you guys off, I just wanted to say expect that Z-Wave um, integration on Friday. Um, I figured I wanted to get one more video out probably on Wednesday about the different types of ways to add devices to your home assistant and why I'm choosing to go the two different Z-Wave and Zigbee USBs versus something like SmartThings. Um, so expect that video coming out on Wednesday and then like I said, the Z-Wave block will probably be on Friday.